In today's video, we're going over Markdown. And Markdown is not exclusive to Obsidian. There are many apps and programs that make use of it, such as Notion, Bear, and many others. So it's definitely a transferable skill. And in this video, I'm not gonna go over what Markdown is, nor its history or any of that. I'm gonna go straight into the good stuff and go over the most common and most useful syntax that you can use on Obsidian. All right, so as always, here we are back at our Mastering Obsidian Vault. And I'm gonna go ahead and open a new page. Let's just call it Markdown Syntax so we can work on this together. And I'm gonna go ahead and come over here to this little um, sunglass icon and press Command and click on it so that we can see two windows simultaneously, one for the preview mode and one for the edit mode. All right, so let's get started with headers. And all you need to know about headers is that you type a hashtag and you press space and you're gonna have header one, two hashtags for header two and all the way down to header six. And when you create a header, you automatically get this toggle on and off button over here and when you type something underneath it and you press the button, it will hide it for you. But bear in mind that if you do this on say header three, it's gonna hide everything down to header six. When you're making a header, you must not forget to type in space because otherwise this becomes a tag. And I've made an extensive video on tags and how I use them. So if you wanna check it out, I'm gonna leave a link over here. All right, so next up, let's move on to text formatting. And the first one is turning something italics. So for that, you can either do this as you can see, it turns this one italics and asterisks would also work. So as you can see, both of them have been italicized. And then if you wanna make something bold, it's the same, only double. Same with um, the asterisks. And moving on, we have strike through and you can just put double tilde strike through and now you have it like that. So pretty useful as well. And then you can highlight something by putting in a double equal sign. All right, so now let's go over lists and you can have lists with just dash. So you can have it dash number one and then it will automatically put more and more dashes in the next paragraph. Next option is you can also have it with asterisks. So then asterisk number and then just have it follow along like that. And then for whatever reason, a plus sign would also work. So if you have a plus sign as well, we go number to keep it consistent. It will also go down in the same way. And then you can have numbered lists. And this is just by putting one dot space. And then it's gonna go down just like that. And then we have my favorite type, which is checklist. And to do that, we press command or control on windows followed by enter and will automatically give us a checklist and you can simply cross this out on the preview mode or when you're on the edit mode you just press it again command enter and we'll cross it out for you and once you go on the preview mode you're going to see it right there if you're watching this i can safely assume that you know that if we press double brackets we can link to another page in our vault so let's use this example and put in this history note 7 but what you might not know is that you can put in aliases very easily so if you do the same and you press history note 7 and let's say that when you're on the preview mode, you don't wanna see history note seven, you just wanna call it um, history notes. All you gotta do is press a pipe and type in history notes or whatever you want to call it. And you can see here that it's still gonna take you to the same page, it's just not gonna show the full tag here. And you can name it whatever you wish. So if you wanna name it important, it will still show up here as important and, sh and take you to the history note seven. It's just not gonna be displayed as History Note 7. And aliases work with any link. All you gotta do is put in pipe and then followed by your alias and it'll work in either way. All right, so now let's explore different types of linking. So obviously we have here a link and then a regular link with an alias, but it gets a lot more complex than that. So let's start off with linking headers in the same page. And I'm just gonna call this headers in the same page. And to do that, we put in double brackets and we choose the page that we are in. And then we go back two places, we put in a hashtag, and then we choose the header that we want to list to. So I actually put in a list header over there to make this easier to see. So then once we come over here, it's gonna show us markdown list. So if you press on it, it's gonna take us to that specific section inside our um, page. So let's do the same, but for headers not in the same page. And you might see where I'm going with this. You just need to have the link that you wanna to go to. So for instance, we can go into our home mock because I know that one has some headers. And then we go back to places and we put in a hashtag 
And in this case, we can put in um, the work header. So when we come over here in our preview, we go straight into our work um, header inside our home mock. So let's go back a page. And as you can see here in our preview window, it's gonna tell us exactly where it's gonna go. And if you don't want that, you can simply add a pipe like we went over. So over here, we can simply come here and add pipe. And instead of markdown syntax list, you can just type in list. And as you can see here on the preview mode, once you click it, it'll do the exact same thing. So then you can do the same for all of them, right? So home work, we can put in example and it'll work fine. So you can see why these are useful, right? The headers in the same page come in very, very handy if you have a very long page. And this here would also be the same reasoning. Sometimes we wanna link only to a certain part of a document and this becomes even more useful if that document has, you know, I, wanna, I don't wanna call it pages, but if it's very long and you'd have to scroll and scroll to find it, this takes care of that for you. And now we're gonna take it one step further. So Obsidian also has a feature that lets us link to individual blocks. And these are different from headers. These here are individual blocks of text, whereas this is a header. So to do that, let's, I'm just gonna type this one down, blocks in the same page. So to do that, we do the usual linking to our page, but then instead of using a hashtag, we use this, right? So now it's telling us every single block in our page. So I can even link to a small item inside the list. So I can link to say this little here, number, right? So if I come here and I press it, it's gonna link us and show us exactly what I mean. And you can see the power of this, right? It can get very, very specific. And just for the sake of continuity, let's um, make the same thing, but for um, another page. And let's use our home mock as well. And let's choose work. So now in, if I press this, I'm gonna be taken straight here. And to make it even more specific, let's put a section of work, such as here. And if you press it, it's gonna take us to this block right here. And you can see why this is so useful. But now you might be thinking, wow, I could deal with what was shown here, but this here is really weird, right? And I don't blame you. So then all you need to do is put in a pipe. So over here, this one's referring to um, a number, right? So you can come here and put in pipe number. There you go, clean number. And the same goes here. This is linking to mocks um, I'm working on. So you can just put in here, pipe mocks I'm working on. And there you have it. And I know this is a lot of terminology to remember, but trust me, memory muscle is real. And once you get this going, you will not forget it. Okay, so now let's go over external links such as a website. And to link to websites, you can just do the manual way and just put in, for instance, obsidian.md. And it's gonna give you this little icon here, which is telling you that, hey, we're gonna go out of Obsidian. But so now let's say that you wanna make it cleaner, right? Because sometimes we have those big, big links. All you gotta do is put in, in square brackets, the name that you want to assign to it, and then in parentheses, the address. So in this case, obsidian.md. And once you close it, here you have it, and it is telling you the same, that it's gonna go outside of Obsidian. All right, so now to conclude the links, what you can also do is embedding. So let's take any of the links here, for instance, this one right here, and all you gotta do to embed it is put in an exclamation point. And you can do this for any link. So I can just come here, put in an exclamation point, and it'll embed it on the preview page. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but to get the idea, all you gotta do is put in the exclamation point. All right, so now let's move on to footnotes. So the first question would be how to make a footnote, right? So let's come up with a random sentence such as this is a footnote. And to actually create a footnote, you'd come here and you put square brackets. And I believe this is called a carrot and then one. So then you'd come to the end of your text whenever you're ready and you type in the same thing, followed by colon and type whatever you'd want for the footnote. And as you can see here in the preview window, if you press it, it's gonna take you to that footnote. And obviously, if you move this elsewhere, and you delete it, if you put it, say, here, it still won't matter because the footnote will still be here. Now, a cool thing about Obsidian and footnotes is that it doesn't matter which order you put them in. So as we see, we've put a one here, right? So what if we made the exact same thing, 
here, but this time we called it a two. If we go back down and we define this and call it definition of another footnote, you can see here on the right side that it correctly identified which order they're in and changed the numbers accordingly. So remember in the beginning that this one here, our first one here was actually a one. But now that Obsidian knows that we made another one here, it doesn't matter what number or even what letter you put in here, it's still gonna treat it in the order that it sees it. So that's really cool about Obsidian. So you never have to worry about organization. So now let's get rid of this footnote. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the way I use footnotes because there's nothing wrong with this method. It works obviously very well, but I like to avoid all sorts of friction when it comes to my writing. And I have to admit that this creates some friction for me because, because if I'm creating a footnote all the way at the top of the page, I still have to come all the way down to define it. So the first thing we do is we get rid of this. And the way this works is that now you put it in line. So you open up with a caret and then square brackets and you type in the same definition of a footnote. I believe that's what we had before, right? And then as you can see here on the preview window, it created the footnote in the exact same way. It still has, when you open up on the preview mode, a one here. It doesn't have the full text. You only see this on the edit page. And assuming that when you go over your writings, you're using the preview mode because that's how it's supposed to be, you're still only gonna see the number here. And in this method, you don't have to worry about going all the way down your page and defining your footnote. You can just let Obsidian take care of all the formatting. All you gotta do is press caret, open square bracket, and define your footnote. I find this a lot more pleasing. And ever since I've been using it this way, I find it really hard, if not impossible, to go back. But we're not done yet. Remember all that we've done here, all of these different um, links, headers in the same page, not in the same page, blocks, this is all applicable inside a footnote. So let's use an example here. Let's first go over footnote sending to headers and let's type in, check these lists. Now we do the usual caret, but now we do a double bracket and we put the page we're in, hashtag, and then lists. But now we're faced with a little problem here because you can see on the right that Obsidian didn't quite pick up what we wanted it to do. And to do that, we need to add a third bracket. And once you do that, it picked up just fine. And if you click on it, it's gonna take you where you want it to. And the reason we had to add a third bracket is because one of the brackets we had before was for the footnote. So we need to have one for the footnote and then two for our normal links. And now we can apply what we just learned and use aliases, for instance. Maybe you don't want to have it marked down syntax list. Maybe you just want lists. So all you gotta do is press pipe and lists. And here you have lists. And it's gonna take you to the exact same spot. So we just used headers as an example, but you can also use blocks. So you do the exact same thing. Check this block. Then you do caret, three brackets put our page that we're in, and then close these two, caret again, and now we can go to our specific block of text, such as this random F. And now you can see here on the preview mode, it's taking us to that exact F right here. And then as the other one, you can also just add a pipe, call it random F, and you can see here, random F. All right, so now let's move on to tables. It's not something that I use frequently, but a lot of you might. So let's go over it. So the way you tell Obsidian that you want to create a table is by putting in header one. Well, you don't have to type this out, but you have to put in some text and then followed by a pipe and then another text and then go down, dash, pipe, more dash. And you can see here, it's already picking up that we have a table. And then you can keep going from here. So you can put in cell value, you know, whatever you want to type in on the cell and then you press pipe and then do cell value two. And if you wanna add, for instance, another column here, you just add like this, but then you would also need to add it here. And then you add something here and you can see our little small table is complete. I'm not gonna lie to you and say that this part of Obsidian is amazing, but you have a plugin called advanced tables. And like I said, I do not use tables in my workflow, but I have played around with it and it's very, very useful. If you're someone that uses tables quite a lot in your workflow, you really need that plugin in your arsenal. And in any case, I will be making a dedicated video on a few select plugins, such as DataView, 
and also the advanced tables. So stay tuned for that. I also want to talk about quotes. I just checked my notes and maybe I should have added it somewhere here. Um, let's see. Yeah, I could probably go here on lists and let's just do it real quick and quotes. And the way you get a quote on your Obsidian is by doing this sign and then type in your quote. So now you can see we have a nice little quote animation on our preview mode. And these quotes, much like most of these list type of things in Obsidian can be nested. So all you need to do is press the same symbol twice and now you'd have um, a quote here, such as um, the author of the random quote. And like I said, you can nest anything. So you can come here to your list and type in a two and put something here. And then if you wanna nest it once more, Obsidian will automatically change the numbers accordingly so that it makes sense. And regular lists can be nested as well. The same with um, these just regular dashes. So yeah, you can nest all you want. And yeah, I just wanted to make that quick note here because quotes are definitely important and I didn't wanna end this video without it. So then another one here, I don't wanna to get too into it because there's a lot that can be said, but if you put in those marks and put in say Python and then put in some code, just the usual print hello world, and then you end it by doing it the same way, and you can change your language by changing um, the code here. So such as JavaScript, Obsidian will format it accordingly. There's a lot of supported languages. All you gotta do is tell Obsidian which language you're working with and Obsidian will format it. All right, so was this an exhaustive Markdown tutorial? Exhaustive would mean that I covered all the elements and everything there is to know about Markdown. And that's not something I did, not only because I don't know it myself, but also because I do not need more than this in my own personal workflow. But if you are someone that likes to tinker, then feel free to check out the link in the description, which is where I learned most of the syntax that I know. All right, so we've done quite a lot today and I don't expect you to just have memorized all that I've said because it took me a while to internalize all of this different syntax when I first got started. So either write a markdown syntax page on your Obsidian or save this video for future reference. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next one. Bye.